Hi, I'm Peter, and this is Go Verbenen. All right, so it is time for part two of my interview with the Director of Global Learning for Creative Commons, Dr. Cable Green. Now, for a lot of people in YouTube EDU, making educational videos is more than just a hobby. It's becoming their livelihood. And this raises the question, is there a place for CC licensing in the business realm? So I asked. Cable's gonna to talk to us about that for a little bit, and then we're gonna wrap up with a discussion of Creative Commons' relationship with Wikipedia. Now this touches on the discussion that I had with Meg Gilbert way back in the beginning, so if you need to refresh your memory or if you want to, here's the link, go ahead and click it. I'll be here when you get back, and let's take a peek and see what he's got to say. Would you say that Creative Commons licenses have a place within a commercial realm? Yeah, so it's a great question. Um... So Creative Commons licenses and for-profit businesses are absolutely compatible. So to frame the discussion, think about Linux. Mm -hmm. right? So Linux operating system is free, it's open source, anybody in the world can take it, it doesn't cost anything. What do most businesses do around Linux if they want to have it on their servers? They, they use Red Hat Linux, a lot of them do. Why? Why would they pay Red Hat any money? Well, Red Hat does a little more. Uh, quality assurance testing. They have a, a nicer user interface. There's an 800 number you can call, right? There's all sort of this nice services around Linux. You're not paying for Linux. You're paying for services around it. Uh, so, you know, one model for a YouTube channel would be to say, here's all of our videos under CC BY, uh, but the the services around it, is, you know, are that we're going to have, um, you know, we'll come out and speak. We will put together the DVD box sets. We'll provide all these other services that we'll charge money for. Another thing that you might do if you're a YouTube channel is you can do what the Khan Academy has done. And the Khan Academy does not use the CC BY license. Khan Academy uses the Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike, or the BY NCSA license. So what Khan is saying is, you can use my videos for free, but it's non-commercial. You may not package up my Khan Academy videos and sell them. You, you can't make the box set. I can make the box set. And it's sharealike. So if you take my video and you change it, that's fine. You can do that. But that new derivative work, you've got to share that under the same license. So if you go to if you go to YouTube and Khan Academy, uh, what you'll see is that, that that's the license that the videos are under. Actually, that's not quite right. If you go to their website, mm -hmm. it's under by NCSA. If you go to YouTube, uh, those are under by NCND, which is non-commercial, no derivatives. Okay. Which is a little bit interesting because they're the same videos. And because of the same videos, you can take the videos under either license. Essentially, they're dual licensing the videos, which is uh, not a best practice. Mm -hmm. That's because uh, I, Cable Green, private citizen of the world, uh, can take the videos under either license. Mm -hmm. And so what I'll do is I'll take them under the buy and CSA license because that's a more permissive license. So then let's say somebody wants to be the... So if anybody... Let's say somebody uploads something to YouTube, it's automatically under the NC... And D, you said. Or, mm. so, so what 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 Khan Academy has done is they put their videos up, mm -hmm. and then in the notes, the comments, they've said this video is under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license, which is fine. The, the problem with the no derivatives licenses is you can't make any derivative works, and so if you are a K twelve teacher and you want to modify it or take parts of it and remix it with something else, the license doesn't permit you to do that. And so to the extent Khan wants impact, that's not going to have as much impact. Now they're, they also license their videos under non-commercial share alike, or sorry, attribution non-commercial share alike, so by NCSA. Um, that, that's a bit more permissive because you can make derivative works. It's non-commercial share alike, you got to share your derivative works. Mm -hmm. uh, so p point being, if you're a YouTube channel, if you're the Vlogbrothers, for instance, uh, you might say, well, I'm a little worried about somebody else making commercial use of our videos. That's okay. Then use a use a Creative Commons non-commercial, one of the non-commercial licenses, and just put that in the comments okay. of your of your video, and that has the same effect of licensing the video under a non-commercial license. Okay, cool. So let's say, I don't know, it kind of sounds to me like if somebody wants to get one of the other CC licenses for their content beside the one that YouTube provides, they would have to find kind of a different platform to upload it under, if that makes sense. No, not necessarily. So you're right. It would be nice if YouTube made all six licenses available as options, plus CC0 to put it in the public domain. YouTube opted not to do that. YouTube wanted to keep it simple uh, and, uh, and clean, so they chose the CC BY license for a very good reason, right? They've got this video 
uh, remix tool on YouTube. And it's very simple and clean to have all the openly licensed videos in YouTube be one license so that there's no conflict in the licenses when you remix. That's why they did it. Um, and it's a simple choice. And you think about Google, everything is very simple, not, very, not a lot of choice. It's kind of their way. Um, but you're right. If you wanted to um, be very clear in the platform what the license was, you could use something like Vimeo or a different YouTube or a different uh, pl video platform that did have different CC options. All that being said, if you use YouTube, you can do what the Khan Academy did, which is to say this video is under the you know, Creative Commons attribution uh, non-commercial share alike or whatever license you want to choose <clears throat> and just include that text and include the link to the license that's also sufficient um, you're just kind of hacking it right you're putting it in the comments what kinds of protections does using a creative commons license provide for people who decide to use them so first of all the main purpose of the license is is for the the licensor the copyright holder the owner of the intellectual property to share the freedoms and permissions that they choose under the terms and conditions that they select so if you go to Creative Commons and you click on choose a license, what you'll see is you can choose one of six different open copyright licenses. So what those mean is keep your copyright and put an open license on your work that extend the freedoms and permissions that you choose. And so uh, you probably know, your viewers probably know, uh, you can put different restrictions on the licenses. You can say non-commercial. So you can use this for free, you can make modifications to it, but you may not make commercial use of my work. Another one is called share alike. We were talking about Wikipedia. If you use my work and you make modifications to it, you change it, you create a derivative work, those your derivative works must be licensed under the same terms. That's share alike. And then no derivatives says you can take my work and use it for free, but you may not change it. You can't make changes to it. Um, and there's some nuances in all those, but we'll leave those to the side. Um, you can also, uh, we have a tool called CC0 where you can say, you know what, I don't want my copyright. I actually want to dedicate my work today into the public domain. And so I can just give up my copyright altogether and put it in. So you've got lots of options um, when you do that. The user gets to use the license or the public domain tool that the user wants to use. So nobody's forcing you to share A. I mean, you don't have to share. You can keep all rights reserved. Uh, that's a protection. Uh, you also have the protection of choice, right? You, you choose under what conditions you want to share and what restrictions are on, on sharing. Um, there are additional protections in the licenses. So one question that comes up a lot is, what if somebody takes my openly licensed work and they do something with it? They change it or they use it in a way um, that I really don't like. So uh, let, I mean, using an extreme example here, let's say that I'm a, let's say I'm a Jewish studies professor and I've, uh, I've shared my Jewish studies uh, textbook that I wrote and some neo-Nazi group takes my work and uses it for neo-Nazi propaganda. Well, I'm probably not going to be very happy about that if I'm a Jewish studies professor and I might think that that's inappropriate. Um, I, have, uh, I have two protections in the license that I care a lot about. One of them is called non-endorsement. So this neo-Nazi group cannot say Professor Cable Green endorses our use of his work in our neo-Nazi campaign. They're not allowed to do that under any circumstance. The other protection that I have, and so legally they can't do it. If they did, um, they're in violation of the license and therefore they're violating copyright law. Uh, the second protection I have is I can uh, request and actually require that they remove attribution from me. And so if they certainly they can use that under the terms of, license, of the license, that's legal. Uh, but, but they cannot use my name on it uh, if I'm not okay with what they're doing. So I can always invoke uh, and require that they remove my name and the attribution links to me. Uh, and that's up to me as the copyright holder. Uh, now they can continue to use it, etc. And so if you're you know, really worried and sensitive that somebody might do something and you don't want it done to your work, then some people might say, well, I shouldn't share that particular work. And that's another uh, protection you have is you don't have to share everything that you have. Some people share um, some of their work and not other work. So uh, this happens a lot with photographers. Photographers might share, um, you know, some of their works and sell other works. Some of the, some photographers share all their works, but they only share lower resolution images and they sell higher resolution images. Um, it really varies, um, but those are a few of the protections in the licenses. Can you tell us a little bit about Creative Commons's relationship with Wikipedia? As you know, everything, every article on Wikipedia is under a Creative Commons attribution share-alike license. 
uh, which is very interesting. That's different. So we were talking about YouTube. YouTube uses the attribution license. The only requirement on an attribution license is that you give proper attribution. So you need to say, uh, what's the title of the work? Who's the author? You have to link to the work. And uh, you need to list the, the license. That, that's, uh, that's what you did under the 3.0 licenses. We have uh, updated licenses, the 4.0 licenses. Attribution in those is even easier. Uh, if you just provide a link to the work and all that information is available there, that's sufficient attribution. Um, Wikipedia is a little bit different. Wikipedia uses the attribution share-alike license, which says essentially uh, if you take that work and you make a derivative of it, so you make a change, a modification to the work, your new work, your changes to the article, in the case of Wikipedia, uh, must be licensed under the same terms as the original work. So the original work, of course, is under a by SA license, which means your changes to the article are also under by SA. Um, that serves a very important purpose on Wikipedia because what that means is that everybody in the world that's modifying, editing, making better these Wikipedia articles, their changes become part of the ongoing openly licensed work. And that, that's a requirement of the license. Um, so that's, that's very exciting, right? We were just talking a minute ago, Wikipedia mm -hmm. is this amazing educational resource. And whereas people made fun of Wikipedia maybe five, six years ago as being, oh, it's amateur and it's not high quality and it's not vetted and it's not edited, what the world has come to realize is that when you've got many eyes on a problem, or in this case, an article, uh, and you've got people from around the world who care about a particular topic, um, they, sure, there's going to be some spam and some misinformation, but on the whole, uh, the people who care about the truth and there being high quality information and properly referenced articles will go the extra mile and they will remove the spam and any, uh, any, uh, any false information and they'll, they'll replace it. Uh, and then what's even more exciting about Wikipedia articles is that there's a, a discussion behind the scenes. So you can not only see the, the history of an article and how it's changed over time, but you can also see the global conversation that's happening uh, because, of course, knowledge is fluid and it changes. And uh, people's uh, ideas and, uh, of history and what, what, uh, what the facts are about something changes as new research comes out, as new studies come out, and people debate that. And that's a good thing. And Wikipedia is unique in the sense that, that that debate, that history of people's differing opinions and uh, what somebody thinks is a fact versus what somebody else uh, is debated out in the open in a transparent way. Uh, and all that's under a, a by SA license as well. Since we were talking about Wikipedia, I talked to him about the discussion Meg and I had about Wikipedia as an educational resource. What's interesting is about Wikipedia is that traditional academics, and if I can cast that broad, <laughs> Uh, that broad uh, umbrella, which is probably unfair, but I think you're absolutely right. Their initial reaction to Wikipedia was, uh, this is amateur, it's not vetted, it's not peer-reviewed, therefore it's garbage, and it's something I should steer my students away from. Um, what's happened, and I don't think this is by the choice of most academics, uh, or doctors, or other people who care about the information that's on the web, uh, but the reality is, whether people like it or not, is that when you go to Google or Bing or Yahoo or whatever search engine you use and you type in a topic, the first article is usually the Wikipedia article. And so some, I've seen very interesting conversations over the last five years. So, for example, the, I think it was the head of the American uh, Chemical Association, if I'm right. Maybe, the, maybe it was the American Psychological Association. It's one of these big conferences of academics. And the president of the association stood up on stage and said, look, like it or not, people self-diagnose medical conditions. And uh, we're, we're the American Psychological Association. People, you know, they go to Google and they type in what symptoms they think they have. And they're reading a Wikipedia article and then they're going to us and they're saying, hey, I need X drug to be treated. He said, we may not like that, but that's what's happening. And so uh, it's going to be our responsibility as the uh, psychologists and psychiatrists of the world, we it's our responsibility to make sure those Wikipedia articles are as good as they can be. And uh, we may not like that, may not then that may not have been our you know chosen course, but hey, it's reality. It's what's happening on the web. So given people are looking there, let's take responsibility to make sure that what's in those articles is accurate, it's well cited, that we're linking to the original sources that we want people to, to be linking to. And I, I think that's very exciting. I mean, here's this open, transparent, 
educational resource that has fundamentally changed uh, the way that the establishment has thought about and contributed to public open information. And that's a good thing. Now, hopefully, Cable's given you a lot to think about in terms of how we can take this internet thing and put it to good use in terms of getting people smarter. If you're interested, I put in a bunch of links that I happen to have and that he's provided with me in the doobly-doo below so that you can go learn more about open education if that's your thing. Now, me personally, I am more than a little bit smitten with the idea of having a digital textbook where content is either linked to or directly embedded within the book itself. And all the more power to us if it's free. Rice University has already started something like this with their project, OpenStacks College, where they have provided 13 open textbooks at college level on everything from physics to psychology. And since they're licensed under Creative Commons 3.0, anybody is free to take them and remix them however they need for their own purposes, as long as they go back and give credit to Rice's original work. I think that's a pretty sweet deal. Somebody could even go through one of these textbooks, find YouTube videos that are related, add the links, and then redistribute it as a YouTube textbook. How cool is that? But I want to hear from you guys. If you're a creator, would you say that CC licensing is a practical thing for you to use? Do you see any shortcomings to this? And can you think of any creative uses for it? If you're an educator, what are some things that might motivate you to use CC licensed material? And what about some things that would push you away from it? I want to know, so let me know in the comments below or on the social medium of your choice. As always, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time. All right, bye guys.